Welcome back to Dan91's Garage. This week we're going to install the wideband O2 sensor and gauge. Obviously these are essential for when you're tuning the fuel map in the DET3. Also it's a critical safety device so you can see what AFRs you've got whilst you're driving. No point messing about, see you guys in a sec. So next up we're going to be mounting the uh, AEM air fuel ratio gauge. So going to need itself a little mount. So I had a quick measure up off camera. And of course it's a 52 mil or two inch sort of step on the back and it's about 62 yeah 62 on the bezel so it's really thin actually it's uh there's virtually no depth to it i mean it's about it's about 15 mil deep and it sticks through the back of this cardboard by about five mil so i had a little bit of a play about and came up with a cardboard template so I've got a 53 mil hole in the middle. That gives us a mil clearance for the step on the back and 65 outsides. So then that should give us a tiny bit of material around it. Obviously a little bit to play with while we're sanding. So chop myself off a strip of two mil alley. So it doesn't have to be particularly strong. So aluminium will be fine for this. And it's nice and lightweight as well. And chop that off on the guillotine that my mate Rob gave me. So big thanks to him. And we're just gonna fold it across here and then cut off what we don't need essentially. So. That's how I'm going to do that. Next up, we've got to find our center. So essentially, you'd be trying to draw a square. So you just put a 45 up in each corner, and that gives you your center cross. So that should come out to about there-ish. So set this at 45. And then go and get the scribe you forgot. There we go. So top edge in the corner. 45, somewhere there. And go down that side, 45-ish. So that should be about our middle. Not too bad. We're gonna go and give it a punt on the uh, pillar drill with a hole saw in it, and uh, it's gonna be spectacular, whatever happens. So here we go. All sorted, so it's about 52 and a half. This hole it drilled out about just under 52, so it's a 51 mil hole saw. Didn't do too badly actually, it wasn't quite as violent and dangerous as I thought, probably because my pillar drill's a bit of a wimp really, but uh, anyway there we go, so that drops in there now, and locates quite nicely in the back of that, so that's cool. So yeah, we'll tidy up the top end, and then we'll stick a bend on it I guess. So there we go, all sorted out. Full end radius, obviously it's 65, 66 wide, so it's obviously a 33 odd mil rad. It's actually looking pretty cool, so that sits in there like that. And there we have it. Pretty much spot on 90. Superb little machine that. So there we go. Little bent up bracket. So we now need to wire up the AFR gauge. So we need to send the sensor wiring through the grommet in the firewall that's usually used for the air conditioning pipes. And then we we'll also need to take power to the gauge from the stereo. So we're gonna to have to get into this area here. So. What I think is best, it's not a particularly difficult car to take apart. So we'll start by taking off the glove box. There's obviously three screws at the top. And then there's two at the bottom, one on each side. And that just leaves a little clip here. 
So we pull this corner down. You can use a trim tool if you want. Pops that. That allows us to open this up. Then we need to reach inside here and disconnect the speaker. There's two little tabs to pull apart and then you can lift the actual so plug off the socket. There we go. Then we need to lift this corner out, out from this little kick panel trim. And then the whole thing just sort of swings out and usually falls on the floor. So let's give that a little go. And that's the dashboard panel out. Next up is the centre console surround. There's two screws up in here, I've already taken those out. And then you just need your trim tool. There's four clips, I think it is, two at the bottom, somewhere two in the middle. So we'll just pry the bottom a little bit. Pops out to there, and then that comes out to there. Then obviously you've got your two or three switches at the top. We just need to disconnect those wires. That's the other. So there we are. That panel's off. Don't forget about these. I have to go back on in a bit, but there we go. All good fun. So that's that off. Because we're going to need to take the stereo out. But first of all, we're going to disconnect the wires from the back of it. So we've got to take the aerial lead out. Ouch, pointy. There's one. There's that one out at least. There we go. That's the aerial one out as well. So it's a doubled in slot on this sort of like metal cage chassis thing, and there's just four screws in the front for that. So, last one in the top corner. Hopefully, this should all just slide out now. There you go. So there it is, double DIN slot. This is actually screwed in, this lower one. That's why you can't just sort of pull it out, but it's not particularly difficult to get to. And like I say, this stereo only has enough channels for front speakers anyway. So one plug there and there's your uh, antenna on that side, so. There you go, thankfully those wires are gonna come out. So that these look like they should be power, earth, constant power and something else but they're just the rear speaker wires so that's that's the colors they've chosen there these ones here are the ones we need to tap into for power and the green wire as we saw from when we were playing with the other gauge that green wire is your lights on wire so that's your illuminated 12 volt and i believe brown is earth but we'll get into that properly in a bit so yep yeah, that's out of there right then so I'm going to mount the AFR gauge here. Personally, I like all the gauges to be sort of at the same height or the best they can be. Obviously, ideally, we could put them in the vents themselves, but that's a little bit low for me. So as low as we can go on the dash, and thankfully, when I'm looking at it, these aren't obscuring the field of vision. They're actually low enough down that the top of the dash and the bonnet are above them, so I'm not actually blocking any of my view. So I've mounted my gauge on the dash using the uh, two mil thick aluminium bracket I've made. It's got a little bit of double-sided foam tape underneath and I've put two M6 bolts through the dash and you can just see the uh, nuts up inside there. There's plenty of room for it. Thankfully, there's no wiring underneath this. And as soon as I'd screwed that one to the dash, there was no problem with me screwing this one down either. So now we're gonna do the wiring. I've decided the wiring's gonna come around the back of the gauge, down in front of the vents and then through the empty switch slot in this fascia so we can drop it down that side. On my particular car, that's the best route. And obviously I said it was gonna take all the uh, power and ground from the stereo loom. So what I've done is on the back of the stereo loom plug, there's this little sort of like white forky thing. That's the uh, retaining clip. So what you do is you stick a little metal screwdriver down the side and then lift it up about a mil and it clicks. And the same on the other side. And as you can see, the white uh, plastic clip is now sticking out the back. Then if you go in the front, you'll see at the bottom of where the contacts are, there's like a slot, like a T-slot. 
and that's where the uh, de-pinning tool goes in. You lift up or lift down a little plastic tab and then that allows you to slide the contact out the back. The only reason I'm doing that is because it's a lot easier to manipulate just one wire, especially when you've got like cutting and stripping tools going on. You don't want to accidentally start mashing up other wires. And it also means you can heat shrink it because otherwise you'd have to tape it. So a set of de-pinning tools and a couple of minutes playing about with this it just ends up with a nicer sort of safer finish to it. So if you look on the back of the plug, the uh, slots are sort of numbered. And on the top row, number three, is this gray wire. And that's our switch 12 volt positive. So that's where our red wire is going to go with a 5 amp inline fuse. And the brown wire, that comes from position seven on the back of this. And that's our earth. Anyway, I've got that off. You've seen, if you've watched my... um how to build a plug and play harness video you'll have already seen how to crimp these sorts of things so i've got some open barrel splices and basically you lay the wire in there in these tiny little brass connectors and then you crimp those down so we'll have the earth wire laid next to that and then we'll crimp them all together as a bundle so there we are the earth wire's crimped on the uh, gauge of wire from the actual AFR gauge itself is quite thin, so I did have to strip off double what I needed, fold it over just to get the uh, sort of bundle size correct for the uh, for the size of the open barrel splices I've got. But that one's on, so I'll put a bit of heat shrink on him, then put him back in the plug so he doesn't get lost uh, before we do the, the 12 volt. So we'll carry on with that. So there we go, all sorted. Inline fuse holder with a five amp fuse in it as requested by the instruction manual. Obviously that's on the switch 12 volt, which is the red wire that then goes to the blue wire attached to the gray wire on pin three. And then somewhere deep in the bowels of that, we've got the black wire for the earth attached to the brown wire on pin seven. So in the AEM power wiring harness, there's three wires I'm not gonna be using. Obviously I'm gonna need power, ground, and I'm also gonna need the analog out plus and the analog out minus. I do need to extend the wires from the analog plus and minus to the debt three loom so i'm going to use two of these pieces of wire that came with it so that way i don't have to use any other wire so i took out the white with the black stripe green with a black stripe and the blue as well because i'm not going to be using any of those on mine it's quite simple to do if you look at the little white plug on the back of it there's like little tabs that are basically like these little sort of rectangular fingers all you've got to do is stick up, I used a safety pin, but just put a safety pin underneath it, lift it up, and then you can simply slide out the metal connector from the plug itself. So uh, deep in those, save myself a bit of weight and got some free wire out of it, so that's cool. So I've tightened the wideband O2 sensor in there. It's got a crush washer on it, very similar to a spark plug, so I just kept tightening it. It was just over half a turn till it had squashed the washer completely, and then like a nice little nip up just to make sure it's sealed. So I've rooted the cable up over the back, quite close to the block. Then we come up the clutch slave cylinder, up over the top there. Underneath all the other wires that go to the thermostat. Then we pop up here, put it through here with the rest of the original wiring loom. And if you put a screwdriver down the inside of that tab, give it a little lever. This entire section flips up like a little door and you just lay that in there. So then follow it around this side, down along underneath one of the brake pipes and through the uh, air conditioning grommet in the firewall. So mine comes in up and over the top, wraps down behind the ECU. And then if you look in here, this is where it comes through from behind the ECU. And then this, absolute massive pile of extra wire we've got coiled up in here that'll be hiding where the stereo used to be and then we go up over the top of this dash bar both of the wires then follow up through here round to the back of our gauge so i think a few cable ties here and there sort that out nicely so that's looking pretty neat we just uh quickly stick the ignition on You can see it starts to go through its cycles. So it's going to heat itself up first. And obviously it's still there, the ignition on. 
That's ignition on, obviously. What I have noticed is that when you crank the engine, it actually loses power to that particular source. So what you've got to remember is that's okay for accessories like this because it's on the accessory circuit. So that's obviously going to turn itself off to give all the power to the engine, starter motor and everything to run the engine. And then once you've keyed back to the ignition, then it comes back to life. So what you've got to remember is you can't hook your DET3 or any piggyback devices up to that because when you're cranking the engine, you'll lose power to the DET3 and it won't be able to fire. So that's something to remember. Always use the ECU's power source for piggybacks. And if you're really bothered, you could take this from there as well, but it's not going to make any difference in this particular case. So that's something to be aware of. So that's it for this week. We're all sorted with an AEM AFR gauge. Nice, easy to read display, nice thin design on the actual gauge itself. So I can't ask for much more than that, really. As always, guys and girls, thanks ever so much for watching. I couldn't do it without you. Take care of yourselves, and I'll see you on the next episode.